Hey guys, it's Nick here, and today we will be getting into part 18 of What If Madison's Family Joined Rick, and today we will be getting to see what has become of Morgan since that airily dark encounter in season 3, which would be season 3 anyway, and see where he's been, what he's been up to, and what will change with his character. Now. Morgan did try to go after Rick and Madison and all them when he threatened Rick to leave or he would kill more than just Travis. But soon enough after trying to go after him, some time after the group had left, he realizes through his craziness that if he doesn't take the bullet out that he had been shot with, he'll die. So eventually he stops at a building an abandoned one, of course, takes out the bullet and eventually just gives up. Because even if wherever they are, he's not going to find Rick for some time. And through this search, kills the two strangers and meets Eastman still. And it is even harder for Eastman to try and help him. Because this Morgan is far darker than the Savage Morgan that we ever saw through the entirety of The Walking Dead. This Morgan is much darker. And so it takes longer to help Morgan, but Eastman is still able to do it. And eventually Morgan is not focused on killing Rick and them anymore. And his mind is finally settled. It takes much longer, but... It still does work, but Eastman has to put in twice the effort that he thought possible. He's really surprised by Morgan. But anyways, Eastman still does get bit. Morgan goes on his own to find Rick and, you know, obviously make up for what he did. Encounters Owen, fights him and Edward, the wolves. And then we cut to Daryl, Alicia, Merle, Gargiulio, and Aaron at the building where the wolves and the trucks were. Well, the wolf walkers, anyway, not the wolves themselves. And Morgan does save them. But afterwards, well, first, want to mention that with Morgan's help and five people being there besides him, they are actually able to kill all the walkers there. And it's not like there was a huge, huge amount but there was still enough that Daryl, Aaron, and Morgan in the original couldn't have taken them all down. But they are able to here with six people. And afterwards, Morgan is questioned at why he helped them and says all oh, life is precious and everything and says he is looking for someone. But before anybody can do anything else, Alicia raises her gun and says that Morgan. Morgan's the name of the guy who might have saved Rick before, but killed Travis. And this makes her very, very angry. Because either this has been an elaborate trap, or this guy truly has changed. It doesn't matter. She wants him dead for what he did to Travis. And Daryl raises his crossbow, too, because he'd never met Morgan before this, even in the canon storyline. So, he'd been told, especially what happened to Travis, he ain't gonna be treating Morgan nicely this time. Because he killed Travis. And asks him, why did he help them and he killed Travis before? Morgan says that he can't make excuses for what he did back then, but he also can't really control what he did back then. After he lost Dwayne and Jenny, his mind was just clouded. He was just in a dark state where he, it didn't matter if it was walkers or people, he killed anything that came anywhere near him. 
And as upset he was that everyone thought he was lying when he mentioned Dwayne and Jenny and that stuff, he is very sorry for the fact that he took that anger and that sense that Walker Dwayne was killed and killed Travis in the process. He can't make up for what he did, but he can try. And he was looking for Rick specifically to make amends and to show that people can change from what he learned from a friend of his that's now dead. And he wants to find Rick to make it up to not only him, but everyone else who was friends and acquainted with Travis. And he just wants to let everyone know that that wasn't him. It was him, but it wasn't. Alicia very, very reluctantly lowers her gun. And while Morgan might be telling the truth here, she doesn't know if she can trust him yet. Because after all, Travis meant a lot to her and Madison, obviously. So it's going to take a lot to trust him. Daryl reluctantly also drops his weapon and says that, fine, if he's really telling the truth, we'll go ahead and take him to where Rick is. And hopefully he's thinking, especially says to Alicia, hopefully he's telling the truth. Meanwhile, we cut to Alexandria. Rick, Madison, Dale, Maggie, and Lori are all going to Deanna's house after the the four besides Rick, went ahead and told Rick and Shane about Deanna and Gabriel and that whole thing. They approach Deanna's house and then talk to Deanna about Pete and Gabriel ratting them out. Deanna admits that both of those did indeed occur, and about the Pete thing, she's known this entire time. She can't make excuses for Gabriel on what he has told her, but as for Pete, she's known for quite a while, and she had hoped that it'd get better before it got worse, which apparently to the results of what's just happened and what the group's telling her, it hasn't. Lori, saying from her own experiences, not really like, well, yes, the CDC, really, her own experiences, and knowing about Ed and Carol and everything else. Because remember, the CDC still happened, so I can include that. But anyways, also with Ed and Carol, it will never get better, ever. She, and Deanna needs to put a stop to this, or they will. And Dale's about to cut in too, even getting to remark about the same thing that Lori just mentioned, and about to say something about Gabriel even, like everybody else is, when just then... Like something out of straight out of an action movie, Pete is hand tossed directly through the door, smashing the door, and his body just falling onto the floor of where they all are. He's not dead, but he is unconscious because standing over him triumphantly in the broken doorway is none other than Shane who wasted no time in the little bit of time that they all went to Deanna's house and Shane went to Pete and Jesse's house to knock him to the freaking ground. Because Shane would not play like Rick. And we know this from my past stories. Now Rick looks down and says that he knew that Deanna likely knew something. And he knew that Deanna would not be so obliged to help them, really. So he took matters, they took matters into their own hands, and that's why Shane's here with Pete. Madison then speaks up and says that they don't want to kill him, and they don't want to hurt Gabriel or anything like that. They just want things to be equal in this community if they're really going to stay. And if that means kicking this guy out at least, or at least making him change then whatever needs to be done has to be done. Now, Deanna, of course, says that no such thing of killing anyone she will permit, meaning Gabriel and Pete, because we knew how Deanna was before she lost Reg. But before she can say further, Abraham, Daniel, and the rest of the construction crew return to Alexandria. 
Now, the mood is somber with them. The same somber mood that Rickett and the company had after coming back from Morgan's apartment. And Deanna is surprised at this. Now, why would she be? Because Milton isn't here. And she is the one who let him go to the construction crew, thinking nothing of it. She asks Abraham and Daniel where Milton is, because she let him go to the construction crew because he was requesting where Abraham was. Eugene slowly approaches the area too, seeing them talk about Milton, and is curious of the same thing. Because not for too long now, he's been looking around Alexandria, wondering where Milton is. Because remember, they're friends. And of course they would be if Milton had actually been allowed to live. And he is just as curious as to what happened to his friend. Daniel, unfortunately, as he told Abraham, is nothing has nothing to do but tell the truth. And says the whole story about how Milton lured more walkers than there were to the construction site, and how he tried to get Abraham alone after what he did to him in Washington. And before he could do anything, Daniel stepped in and put him down with a gunshot to the chest and then the head, because Milton dug his own hole. He's the one who took it too far when he thought that Abraham did just by punching him unconscious. Now, on one side, Eugene is mad at this because he de deeply cared for Milton. Their love of science, their friendships together. I mean, for God's sakes, look at my what if Sophia joined Negan. They made a cure for crying out loud together. And Milton lived to the end. And only living to this point? Eugene's still going to be mad at this, especially after he hears about what actually happened. And he's really thinking about lowering his madness toward the both of them in general. But then again, the logical side of him has to think for a second. And he really has to agree that Milton did this to himself. And if he were in Milton's shoes, he would have at least accepted what had been done to him much softer. And we know about this in the original. All he did was kick Abraham from his services. Your services are no longer required and that whole deal. It was much more soft, softer of a moment. Anyways, Pete is effectively kicked from the community in all intents and purposes. That's really the only thing benefiting him in this story is to kick him out. But that ain't going to do well for him in the rest of the story. Let me tell you that right now. Anyways, Gabriel is forgiven and reconciles with the group that he's sorry, and he will learn to trust them better, especially after everything that's happened. And Glenn and Nicholas are never going to have their fight like they did in the woods because of circumstances and the fact that Glenn beat up Nicholas way more because of Tyrese being the one to die instead of Noah. It's much more, like I said, if it was Bob, T-Dog, or Tyrese, Nicholas would not be able to escape out into the woods, most likely, because he would be far more beat up. Or it'd be just because of circumstances. Either way, it doesn't happen. Now, like my What If Rick Spared Shane remake, Pete joins the wolves, eventually finding Owen. So, that little twist will come into fruition again for the next part of the story. Spoilers! Now, we now approach the sixth season, or what would be considered the sixth season. It, it, it would be kind of around that point, let's be real here. Now, what will happen going further? Do you think the wolves will be just as much a threat as the original story? Lower? Or even higher? And what about Negan, now that he has a tank on his side? How will that go into later effects of the story? And how will Morgan be forgiven by the rest of the group rather than just Alicia and Daryl? And that's where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. Hope you guys enjoyed this part and are enjoying the story so far. We are still quite a ways away from the ending. You could consider this almost like the halfway mark to a degree. But I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment for suggestions for future videos. And I will see you guys next time.